Good evening, everyone. Before I start talking, if you are a Christian, please pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this Monday. I thank you because you've kept me alive up to this day. Lord God Almighty, I'm going to speak to the world. I say the world because there are many that are lurking and watching. Lord, whatever word that comes from my mouth, guard it, guide it. Give me wisdom, give me direction. Let me speak the right things. So people who are evil, who are there to attack me, who are there to drag me to the mud, those who want my downfall will not misconstrue whatever that I say. Lord, come and sit in this meeting. Speak for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi guys, I hope you can hear me. Um, my name is Beverly Afaglo. I have middle names like Amagbe in the middle. Amagbe, the, the full name of Agbe is Agbeleseshi. Agbeleseshi in Ewe means life. It's in the hands of God. I'm half ever half a can. My can side, they call me Ama Mwenuma and Kwani here. When they call me Ama Mwenuma and Kwani here, I don't even understand, but today I do understand. And Kwani here means life is more important. Today marks one week since my house got bent down by fire. It's exactly one week today. It was on a Monday, the 9th, that this happened. Nobody knows I'm coming live. Not my husband, not my management, not my friends, not my family. Nobody. Because what everybody around me keeps saying is, don't answer them. Don't speak. Just don't say anything. But you're not in my shoes. You don't know how I feel. You don't know what I'm going through. So you can afford to say, don't mind them. You can afford to say, don't listen to them. But put yourself in my shoes. If you as a person, you haven't done anybody wrong, but with what you're going through, with my situation that I'm in right now, people all over the world decide to talk against you, decide to humiliate you, Decide to make you feel bad and worse than what you're already feeling. Can you sleep? I've not been able to sleep. Yes, I am strong. I don't know how I was built. I don't know how God made me. But I am strong. Thanks to the loved ones. God, people have shown me love since this happened. My friends, my, my family, my fans, my real fans. Not my following, my fans, the real fans who really care about me. Those who follow me because they love me. Not those who follow me because they want to see my downfall or to see what I'm doing wrong. But the real people, they follow me. They love me. They have shown me so much love. And I'm grateful. Today I'm grateful for life because I feel... God has exchanged my property for my life and for the life of my children. I am grateful. I am thankful to God. My kids and I slept on the 9th of August with no clothes, no shelter, basically. We had nothing. Because I went out that day in my, my, in my vicinity with just a leggings and a t-shirt and flat slippers and my handbag. With just my two phones in my bag, nothing. But God saved us. That's all I can say. I lost everything. My siblings have been supportive, friends, fans, as I keep saying. By the next day, People were knocking at my door. People were calling me. 
my management numbers are on my bio people were continuously calling my management that how can they help how can they support what is going on what is going on then Yvonne Nelson said, I want to open a GoFundMe for you. What do you think? I suggested it. I mean, I told my management that this is what Yvonne is saying. Then management said, why not? People have been calling. They want means of supporting. So if there's something like GoFundMe, let's go for it. I told my husband. My husband was against it because he's a showbiz personality as well. And he knows how evil the internet is. But we went against him and went ahead to do the GoFundMe. Thinking that the love that I was receiving was going to be the same love that I was receiving or I was going to receive. But it turned around to hate. The moment Yvonne posted the pictures of the GoFundMe and all information, hate and trolls started coming in from every corner. Then a video came up. Let me backtrack to that video. Please, I am not mad. I won't wake up and start ranting or saying I have this and that and that. I am not crazy. I will never do that. So where you're if you're human, if you think, if you're matured enough, you should listen to that video and you should think that what pushed me to say this? At the time that I made that video, there were stories going around after I, I granted an interview on radio. The presenter asked me about a rumor that he said he has heard. By the time I left the studio the next day, there were stories around the question he asked. And the question was, or the rumor at the time was that I've been going to London back and forth lately that I have a man in London that has been buying my ticket and I've been visiting him. I got upset. I got upset that why would you even think that I have a man aside my husband? Secondly, why would you even think that a man has to buy me a ticket before I can go for my vacations? Then I went mad and I recorded the video that I did. I told the world that I'm not broke. I never ever use the word rich. I never go back and play that video. I never use the word rich. I said I'm not broke. And of course I'm not broke. And I can never be broke in Jesus name. I can never be broke because I'm not hungry. I'm not homeless. I am not broke. I work hard for my money. God knows I work hard for my money. Then in that video, I went on to say that if I don't even work or you think you don't see me on TV or you think I'm not even selling the products that I sell, I have an inheritance. I have an inheritance that I take my rent from. I didn't lie. I don't fake. Yes. I have tenants that I take rent from. I didn't lie. But as I said, I said I'm not broke. And I'll still say it that yes, I'm not broke. By the special grace of God, I am not broke. I work hard. My husband is supportive. He works as well. We work hard to get our money. I have an inheritance that I take tenants, tenancy from. Now, after saying this, and after everything that happened with my plight, my misfortune, they've brought videos up, captioned it, that this rich person, why are you going to support her? She said she is rich. She said she is rich. And I'll say it again. I never use the word rich. And yes, I have tenants. Should I go and evict them today? just because I'm homeless? If you were my tenant, will you be happy? Even the law gives tenancy three months before eviction. So it will take time. Even if it's true that you claim I said I'm rich, how many rich people have money sitting in their accounts doing nothing? 
Money is in the accounts, doing nothing. They do investments, they do business. So when something this grave, the gravity of what has happened to me happened to even a rich man, it will shake the person. Because investments don't grow in a day. And you cannot pull out your investment in one night. Sebi sebi o tun fo kra ye chena de. Sebi sebi o. The Asante Kingdom. The king of Ashanti. They give him gifts. O wisko o wiska pa. Sebi sebi o so nun po anasi ke ni bimpo na de atuna. Si ke ni bi na asema atuna. Bo be katre ni so wiska ni yin janu nun wuana. What did I do to people? What did I do to people? People are talking as if I just woke up one day and I said my house is bent. And you are talking as if the house is a room. It is not a room that is bent. It's my whole house. From bedrooms to living room to kids room to storage room to my kitchen Everything has gone down. Then I ask myself, where do I start from? When am I buying an iron? When am I buying television? When am I buying AC? When am I buying microwave? Toaster? Blender? Chairs in the living room? A bed? A fridge? A freezer? Washing machine? Where do I start from? Even if I have money to afford rent. I have to start putting in things. It will take time. But it doesn't really matter. I will survive. Me. I have a tough skin. I bless God for my soul. I bless God for how he created me. Me. I can live under a bridge. And I'll feel nothing. I can really live under a bridge. I'm a type that can eat raw food without meal, uh, without meat or fish. Not that I, I can afford it, but sometimes I just don't feel like eating the meat or I, feel, I don't feel like eating the fish. Some people will say, oh, just I'm not the type. I can eat raw food without meat and I'll not feel anything. I've never known hardship. But God has created me. I've never known hardship that maybe I'm living in a place that we are being ejected for rent or we are sat from school for school fees. Or, but God built some empathy in me that when I see people struggling, I feel the pain. So because of that, it makes me strong every time because life is nothing. Then again, I say, I can, I can actually sleep even under a bridge if I have to. But my children, my children, my children need the comfort they are used to. My children need the comfort they are used to. That is why. That is why maybe I didn't think in the split of the moment. And I said, go ahead with the GoFundMe. It's not as if I cannot live the next 20 years struggling to get to where I was. I can. I wait for what I have and I can get there again. Yes. They say I brag, I live a fake life. Gosh, why? What did I do to you? Have you ever seen my room before on my page? Have you ever Send my living room before on my page? Have you ever sent my house on my page before? I don't flaunt anything. Have I bought something and come to display that I've bought this? Does any one of you even know the car I drive? I don't flaunt anything. I've been driving since I was 21. I got my first car at the age of 22. My family bought it for me. At the time, we were going for auditions, for, from auditions to another. 
at the time, the celebrities you know today, most of them didn't have cars. But I found delight in dropping one person to another. They would just sit in my car, I'll draw this person here, I'll drop this person here. But I never for a minute felt that I was better than anybody. There was no time that I ever felt that I was better than anybody. I've not flaunted anything before. I don't show off. I don't show off where we are going or where we are. If you see me even on vacation posting too much, it's because I'm advertising for a company. I don't go out of my way showing where I am, showing what I'm wearing. I'm not that type. Have you seen my bedroom before? My house, my kitchen. Then people keep on insulting me, insulting me. I'm this and that. They went to the extent of even saying that the house is not my house. It's a family house. Yes. Part of it is a family house. I was born in that house. Some people even say it's not my family house. Part of it is my family house. I was born in that house. 28th May 1983. I've never lied about my age and I'll not do that today. 1983. I was born in that very house. Community 9 in Tema. I got married and I got out of that house from my single room. Yes, I'm entitled to just a room and a toilet in my family house. I never rented. I never stayed with any man. I married from home. And I went out. Eight years down the line, we decided to come back home because renting a three-bedroom house in any part of Ghana is not cheap. So I suggested to my husband that my mother has a land so we can build something and manage it till we build our own dream house. I didn't pack my children, my house help, and myself from my three bedroom house to my single room that I left behind. We built. My husband and I built our house ourselves. It was our sweat, our money that built the part of the house that I was staying in. The pattern looks the same. Because you cannot come to an old house and start building a story building by the side just because you're building a new house. I have to follow the plan and do exactly as how the house looks like for me to just get my space. I built it to continue. So looking at that house like that, obviously you think it's a full house like that, but there are apartments. My house is gone. My shoe rack alone is eight feet high and how many width? But I've never showed up before. I cannot count the things I've lost. I cannot count the number of suitcases of even what my husband married me with, the cloth and everything. And people sit down on TV stations, radio stations, fake blocks and insult me, insult my family with what we are going through. We are traumatized. We are traumatized. My mother's property, that is a nine bedroom house with a living room, toilet and bathrooms in five of the rooms there with a kitchen, everything is down to zero. You don't sympathize with us. Anybody who doesn't have empathy for this, you are evil. You are not human. Unyabadaye Kra said, the woman who is 78 years old, in the lifetime memories, is all gone. Her lifetime memories it's all gone i built my house and moved in just a year ago just last year early last year i bought my block i bought my cement i bought my paint i bought my i did my tiling i did my electric house i did carpentry i did plumbing i bought my sink i bought my toilets i i, I fixed my kitchen i fixed my kitchen cabinets so what didn't i build my sin was building on my, on my mother's land. That is the sin that my husband and I did. Because we built on my mother's land. That people has, have to insult us, degrade us to nothing. 
I think. Then I'm my young, my Joe boy, my Joe Kun, my young mommy, my dear Drew Biato, so my Joe and Juma. Then I'm my young. If I've done anybody wrong, please forgive me. Let us have a quiet life. We are going through a lot. Leave my name alone. Some blogs, some websites even went to the extent of dragging my family into it. My extended family. Calling them names, saying what they don't know and creating stories. Then on my own. I'm a and I'm saying a celebrity na me daho. Na mo de me ato chop board so. But de inti na mo de me family a bim. What have they done to you? What has my family done to you? And then ni ato me new. And it can happen to anybody. Fire. Took the whole house. Took the whole house. Even my business. I had... A storeroom that I stock my waist trainers, my my slimming coffee, slimming teas, flat tummy teas in that house. That's where I stock them. Everything went down. I don't even have what to sell to even make money. The money I see every day is even gone. I'm here to now order another one, which is even going to take a week or two before it gets here, before I start making my own money again. In September, I plan to start a shawarma business in two joints in Tema. I've bought my shawarma machines, two of them. I bought a toaster. I bought a few things the guys who are going to do it told me they are going to use. It is in my house. Or I should say, it, it was in my house. It's gone. You don't even know the gravity of what is happening. As I said, I'm not talking about a room. I'm not talking about two rooms. It's a house. A whole house has gone down. Inti be human. It costs nothing. It costs nothing. And I'll emphasize again that that video that they are playing around was an attack on my marriage. That's why I decided to talk. And in that video, I never said I was rich. I said I'm not broke. And I'll never be broke. In Jesus' mighty name, I will never be broke. I have family, I have friends. I have real fans who love me. I can't begin to mention the, so, the number of people who have shown me love. Today, which is one week of what happened to me, I'm going to ask everybody doing the GoFundMe, especially Yvonne Nelson, to end the GoFundMe. It is ending today. I come forward saying be omo komo say ni pa ni chesika ba nyanko pon na eche so it's not up to you it is god it is god who redeemed me my 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 verse all my life has always been first peter 5:10 it says after you have suffered a little while he himself will restore it's always been my favorite verse so whenever i'm going through anything I refer to that verse and tell God that you said after I have suffered a little while, you will restore. And I believe in that word and I pray with that word and God will restore. In due time, it can take 10 years, 20 years, but I'll be fine. I will be fine. The GoFundMe ended at 1,839 Ghana cities. That's what I screenshot before I started this life. $1,839. $1,000 equivalent is about 6,000 Ghana cities. And uh, 800 and something. I'm assuming that we can be talking about 11,000 or 10,000 something. I am grateful. Thank you very much.
I don't know how to put it. This cannot even rent a house. But I am super grateful. My manager is calling me. I'm not picking up. I am super grateful to all the love, even the momo, the, the little, as little as three Ghana cities. I saw it. Five Ghana cities, ten Ghana cities. Go touch your heart and you blessed me. I was moved. You put me to tears with those monies. You really put me to tears. Because they say the one who has little that will give you, when he has big, he will give it to you. So I bless you for blessing me with your five cities, with your three cities. I bless you. You will never lack. For those who are against me, sitting on radio stations, TV stations, having discussions and laughing over my misfortune, over my predicament, calling me names, swaying people off the fact that I'm going through something and making a ridicule of my misfortune. Just because of numbers, just because of views on YouTube, just because of numbers, likes on Instagram. Instagram doesn't pay us anything. Why will you run somebody down? And I make her know. me who are saying papa. Men kashi chemunako. Those who use their credit to type evil. The real people know me. They love me. If you follow my life, if you really know me, you follow my life, even on Instagram, keke. You will know how I live. That I'm a simple person. You will not listen to what people are saying. You not listen to what they are dissecting me and discussing me that I've given them content for their programs. God should forgive them. Because they're two or more. If you are not more for more who any of my semi-dee. If you are not more just you are not more who. If you are not more busy on bed than you are more who are busy on who. If you are not more ma or more family in your third degree bends. Now the person is cut for life. Nini na na me sha na me dey radia say I thank God for my life. So nothing can change the blessings that God has given me. Life goes on from today. It's been a week. God has been good. People have blessed me with clothes. Today I wore a white dress to celebrate. It's victory for me. I have had clothes. People have sent me clothes, shoes. I am grateful. Thank you guys. You might see me in town dressed up, wearing a wig, wearing the makeup. You might even see me at a party dancing. It doesn't mean that all is well, but I've learned to live, that's all. So don't judge me. Don't judge me if you don't know me. I know I'm gonna have a problem with my management, with my husband, with my friends. But this needed to be cleared out. My name need to rest. Me mami wu and sana waka me hua sempa. Don't let me die before you say she was like this. Oh, she was like this. Oh, she was like that. When I'm alive, let me experience your love. If you don't love me, I bet you don't know me. Because nobody has come into contact with me that doesn't love me, I promise you. Whether even on Instagram, in our DMs, wherever you see me in person, you can't do me wrong because I'm a great person. God knows I'm a good person. I've never wronged anybody and I'll not change because of what you're doing to me. God bless you for listening. I said I'm going to share a testimony for my life. What I'm going to share is that. What I'm going to share is that um, a week before that, a week before, a week before I did, um, um, what do you call it? A week before my house got bent. I'm not cutting it. I'm not cutting it. I beg you. I'm not cutting it. I want to finish with this. A week before I got this accident, I call it an accident. There was a, I, I go to action 
September Committee 9, not Committee 9 anymore, Motorway Runabout, so ACI International. And we had a prophetic conference the whole week. Throughout the week, my children and I went to the service in the evening, every evening. It ended on a Friday, the Friday before my plight on Monday. It ended on a Friday. On the, fast, on the Friday, I decided to fast. On the Saturday, which is Yakrada, to the day all me and my children, all of us were born. I decided to fast for me and my family and my children on the Saturday. I think even on the Saturday night, I joined Facebook Live for the 48 hours praise and worship or something for some church. I think Prophet Gideon. I prayed. I felt closer to God. I felt, I felt good in my spirit on that Saturday. On the Sunday, we went to church for Thanksgiving. And on Monday, this happened. What I want to share with you is that it's God that sometimes speaks to us. It's God that saves us. It's God that makes things happen for us. I just prayed normal, not asking for anything, but thanking God for my life. And God saved me just a day after all my prayers. So sometimes it's good for us to pray and bank some of our prayers. Some of our prayers that you've banked for a while. God is going to use that to save you. God is going to use that to bless you. That is all I want to say. Let's not forget about praying. You can live the life. I love to have fun. You see me partying. You see me everything. But my relationship with God is solid. And I tell you all to do the same. Thank you for listening to me. And I pray to God Almighty. That whatever that I said here. If you pick it as a blogger. Or whoever that decides to pick it. Please don't change whatever I said. Don't change anything that I said. Please, please, in the name of God, let my name rest. Thank you. God bless you for listening. Bye-bye.